Hi everyone, it's Nicola Badalana from Pixie Hill Studio here and today I have a project that I finished very recently that I'd like to show with a small tutorial at the end. So um, this is the laundry room and it is a fairy sort of dry cleaners for wing and wand cleaning and repair. Um, there's lots of stuff going on in there. There's boxes of wands and buckets with suds and bubbles and boxes of soaps and cleansers and um, let's see, there's some how-to stain removal books. Um, lots and lots of things going on in there. And if I turn it around, um, you'll see that the outside is a brick wall. Let me just adjust this for a sec. There we go. Um, the outside brickwork, um, I'm really, really pleased with the way it turned out. And um, I used Gina's brick wall stencil. Um, or texture sheet to create the brick wall and that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So I'm not going to show you do the whole laundry room but I will show you how I achieved this brick wall look pretty easily. It was um, a fairly painless process. So let's get to it. Let's make a brick wall. Before you begin, what I recommend is that when you get your texture sheet or your stencil um, to coat it in a varnish, a protective uh, sealant so that you can use it again and again. This is what I've used. It's Armor Coat Spar Varnish and it's for marine use. So it's made to protect things from water. I used this on some paper mache sculptures that I had in the garden last year and they lasted throughout the the, the summer and it was a really wet gross summer so it does the job and I've used this stencil a few times as you can see and it's um, it's it's held up really really well so that's my first tip is to coat your stencil I probably have about three coats of varnish on this and it's pretty it's pretty sturdy it's held up really well um, when I was thinking about this project, um, I wanted something really cheap to create the brick texture. There's all sorts of art supplies out there that are very, very expensive, and I am very stingy with my money. So, we went to the building supply store and I bought some spackling, and this little tub cost me about $2.50. And it is, um, I've used it on a number of projects and it's pretty cool. It, um, it is a bit delicate, so if you're planning on picking at stuff or um, banging stuff around, this will not hold up. But if it's for display purposes and it's not going to get knocked around too much, it's, pretty, um, it's a pretty good, inexpensive alternative. So... I'm going to take my stencil and I'm just going to use this uh, card tag. Uh, this tag is actually from Graphic 45. I'm going to use this tag to, uh, for demonstration purposes. So I'm just going to put my stencil right on top. And then I'm just going to take my finger and scoop a whole bunch on here. And this particular spackling um, starts out pink and will dry white. I'm going to put a healthy, a healthy amount on there. Make sure to read your labels if something's corrosive, wear gloves or what have you. Um, all I have, this is just a piece of, um, card folded over. If you have something fancy you want to use, go ahead, but this is all I'm using. So I'm just starting by smushing it in and I'm pressing down. I'm trying to get a good 
layer on there and I want my layer fairly even but I don't want it completely smooth and I think that this is where the texture of the spackling really helps because it's not a completely smooth substance. It is a little bit grainy and gritty and that helps with our to make our bricks realistic. Pretty good. So after um, I'm finished smushing this about, I'm going to lift off my stencil and I'm going to wash off my stencil right away. So just sort of peel it back. And there you have your bricks. I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna go clean off my stencil and I'm gonna clean off when my surface. When the bricks turn white, you'll know that they're dry and you can move on to the next step. I am using um, an acrylic paint. The color is sandstone, but you can use something like putty or any sort of neutral color. This will be, um, this protects this layer but it also provides the grout color for your wall. And I'm just, I'm coating the entire, the entire thing. And you can see it's already starting to look a bit like a brick wall. It looks like a painted brick wall, that's for sure. And I'm just giving a really, really good coat and I'm making sure that I'm getting all these textured areas and all the little spots in between. So once this base layer is dry, I'm going to add my color. And I have here some acrylic paints and I have different colors. I have an orange, a yellow ochre, a sort of pinky color, and black. Um, Bricks aren't just one straight color. If you look, there's all sorts of flecks of different colors in there. So you want to be a little bit more realistic. You want to add those little flecks to your work. And I want a really sort of dry brush and I'm gonna stipple it over these bricks. You can smush it around too. Don't worry if you get in the in the mortar um, too much. I mean, you don't want to you don't want to slather a whole coat on, but a little bit in the a little bit in those grout lines isn't going to hurt anything. Now, the thing that you do want to watch for is you don't want to create patterns. So if you're alternating your colors, you don't want to do this have a whole diagonal you really want to try and be random and you know it's okay if you have a darker brick like this that's absolutely fine because you'll find in brick walls you often have some bricks that are darker than others you'll see sometimes that i wipe the paint on my hand like that i find that it gives just the right amount of paint on my brush and that's that's why I do that. And you'll see as my color is changing, as I'm moving up the wall, I'm going back down and adding color to these lower bricks. And this helps the whole thing to look more cohesive. I'm gonna go back now and just add some darker spots. Fill up any large areas that I missed.
if anything looks like it doesn't fit in, I'm just adding a bit of a bit more paint so that everything looks like it belongs together. So what I'm doing at this point is I have a very, very light wash and I'm filling in all of those points, all those edges that I missed before. I'm leaving all that color variation that I had to do, that I've just created. And this is just a very light wash on top, just filling in the edges of those, of those bricks. I know it seems like a lot of steps. They're very easy steps, but it just it seems like a lot of steps, but I really do believe that um, using many, many layers creates a much more realistic color, um, depth of color than just slapping it on. And you can see this wash is very light, so you can see all of the variations that we created before. Finally, when this is dry, you can add additional highlights and colors with a little bit of um, chalk pastel. So just rubbing it'll catch sort of on the, the edges of your, the texture of the, the bricks. And just sort of soften them out a little bit. When your color is complete, if you like, you can add um, a coat, a protective coat on top. Um, it's probably a pretty good idea because the stucco is quite delicate. Um, if it gets bumped or knocked, uh, you'll end up chipping a little bit off. Um, so a good coat of a matte, flat sealant um, is probably a good idea. If you use glossy, your bricks are going to look shiny, um, so try to avoid that. But a matte, um, a coat of a matte medium um, will probably do the trick. 